Thanks everybody for showing up. This is uh, podcasting, video podcasting one on one. I'm Ward Miller. I'm this Chuck. Chuck. Jeff. Jeff. Hello. And. Uh, yeah, you might want to do that. I'm the editor, producer, and co creator of Maxim Life and Restaurant Food Fast. Chuck is, is the talent. <laughs> I'm the prima donna. I'm the one they have to find every day to do this. No green and M&Ms. Uh, but we all, all three of us work on the same show, and Jeff's our cameraman. So any camera type questions you might have, that's going to be the guy you want Yeah, to camera technical yeah. advisor. He has the degree in computer animation. He's the well, instructor well, well. down here. and So we kind of got it all covered. All right. First thing you want to do when you're going to develop your podcast is come up with a plan. Um, there's so many plans or so many uh, podcasts that come up that go great guns and they have two or three good episodes and then they die because it's like, what do I do now? Where do I go from here? So have a good subject in mind and the key to it is passion. Whatever you're going to do your, your show Passionate. Our show, uh, the cooking show, Chuck was passionate. And he's a chef, so of course he's passionate about cooking. So for him to do a cooking show was kind of in the brain. So we did seven episodes of Restaurant Food Fast. Here's that the hijack. Let's back that up for a minute. We've been doing audio podcasts, different sorts of podcasts for years. The yeah. word passion is more along the lines of the podcast itself. He likes the editing. He likes putting it together. He likes doing all the the marketing things that involve getting a podcast out there, getting it on iTunes. This all goes into the planning segment because how are you going to do it? How are you going to distribute? Where are you looking to distribute? These are all things you want to think about as you're thinking about what I'm going to do. You can go into the assumption that everybody here wants to do a podcast of some sort. Whether it be for work, you're doing it just for informing. Well, that's easy. That eliminates your, what should I do with it? You know, my boss says, I have to put it out on how to use X, Y, and Z. So now you just have to focus on the passion of actually doing the product, how you're going to disperse it. So. Quick survey. How many in here are, doing, are going to do podcasts for no one? You can't, are you doing a, going to do a video podcast for your job, for work? We have a good amount. So you guys, your passion part of it is is fairly simple. It's already told you. I have to show people how to use this. Yes, this is that's your passion. That's your that's your passion. You just got to think about now how do I distribute? That's where your your passion has to actually be doing it as opposed to what you're doing. This is the other thing. How long can your passion go? I mean. Is it something simple where you're going to show somebody how to cook a roast? And you're going to do a mini series. All right, that's fine. And, and you're going to plan for doing five or six series, five or six episodes, and you're done. Or is it going to be something on the lines of what Leo Laporte does, where it's just a constant uh, show from beginning to end on, whereas ours is on Macintoshes, do one on Windows, do one on plants, do whatever, but figure out how long you're going to make it last. Because you, you, the last thing you want to do is say, this is my passion, this is what I really like to do, and then you fade after three weeks, or fade after three episodes. And you just say, yeah, it's, it's not as fun anymore. You know, that, or I'm that, not getting the response I'm looking for. If, what, this is a, a really large question that every podcaster tends to ask. What is your goal? You have to ask yourself, what is my final product? Are you looking to monetize? Are you looking just to get information out? The cooking show actually came about because in my social circle, I get calls constantly. How do I do this? What do I do? I did this wrong. It did this instead of that. So I figured, okay, well, instead of answering all these calls, I would do the show. Everybody can go out and look at it. So it doesn't have to answer the phone anymore. So I don't have to answer the phone anymore, right? But you know, have a basic format, and this all comes under your plan. So if you're going to have where we do our tech show, we say, okay, well, we're going to 
have a new segment, and we're going to have a how-to segment, and we're going to have a, you know, a, a product segment, for example. So you, you have a, a basic format for every week. I know that walking in the door, we got to have a how-to ready, we got to have a product review ready, and we got to have uh, some news source, some type of news source. So it's kind of the same thing. You want your audience to expect the same type of format week to week. You don't want them to come in and go, well, last week you started with the news, and, and this week, don't confuse them. <laughs> Is he here? Who? The guy who did the last year who did the sticky, how to make it sticky? I have not seen it. No. The, last year we had a gentleman who did a really good <coughs> class about just the functionality of what you're doing. Um, this all goes into the Web 2.0 series. This is, as Leo Laporte says, this is what the future is bringing. Right now, it's this great big shotgun thing, and as we go along and get better at this, it's going to narrow and focus down. Um, one of the things that you'll notice is the podcast, when you go out and look at any sort of video podcast, um, people tend to gravitate towards the things that become familiar. That's what your clients look for, particularly if you're doing a work. They want familiarity. So if you're going to do anything, just, just pick your subject. If it can be done in a set, keep the same set. Um, if you're going to do something that's out and about, try and keep the same format. And then think of length of time. Uh, one of the big things is attention. I have a tendency to ramble because that's what I do in my job. I'm a speaker. So I can go on for hours and hours and hours. In general, podcasts say, don't... Really know. Yes. Uh, oh, I can talk about nothing forever. In general, podcast viewers, it's just like that whole thing of the attention span of a six-year-old. You want little blocks. So get your information out there and put it down if you watch the Twerk show. He's been on forever. He comes out, he tells you, this is what we're going to do. Click, stops, breaks. It may just be a camera angle. Um, but you want to give somebody that definitive that was one segment, this is one segment, this is one segment. It's called making your product sticky. People will remember smaller pieces as opposed to big, long, rambling rings. Like that. Yes. yes. See? I can talk forever. And that goes back to what Chuck was saying about having a set in mind. There's, I've seen many podcasts, uh, for example, Command N does theirs outside, you know, for the most part. All the, the talking and all the intros and whatnot are done outdoors. That's great. And whenever the show starts, you always see somebody that's going to be staying outside. So you know that that's coming. And it's the same thing. And, and I use my show, for example, because I just know how it works. Where it always starts with us sitting down and the camera at this angle, period. So that the user sees the same thing and we get the repetition. Repetition is huge. Yeah, it's particularly if you're doing it for, again, trying to segregate this back and forth between work and whatnot. But before you get to the cameras, I had a question back on your uh, set and line, or the amount of time. Uh-huh. Uh, did you guys, like, test the amount of time? Like, uh, if you have a certain topic, do you, do you predetermine, okay, we're only going to do five minutes and that's it, or did you, like, test it? We, we try and keep everything within a five-minute line. It, and with him, it doesn't happen. Uh, our, goal is, our goal is five minutes, and usually I edit it to five minutes. But yeah, that's a good question. Um, it all depends on how long you want the show to be, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later as to who's hosting you and how much space you have in one So I will be there. There are actually um, researches and studies that go on, and they will actually tell you how long the segment should be. Um, it just, like you say, it varies upon what you're putting out. Um, the last one I saw was, even with, with multiple small segments in it, you go two and a half minutes per clip. They say if you start going over that, you start losing interest, and people start fading. Uh, but that changes uh, almost daily. Yeah, it also depends on your audience as to what you're putting out, because if you're going after, you know, one type of audience, they, they might, you know, a tech audience. They're going to be able to sit down and, and watch something for a longer period of time than 
Tech different people type. are completely different. They don't fall under any market standard. <laughs> they don't. If you watch the oh, port, the port had this, the same issue when he was dealing with networks. Tech people are different. Tech people watch a show for a very specific thing. But it's not a huge audience, but it's very loyal. So if you're doing a tech show and you're really getting in deep with it, it's not going to hurt you now. Because everybody who watches that show is expecting that. If you're going more just for entertainment value and for a general audience, then you really got to start thinking about fast and quick. Fast, quick, get it in and out. You know, think of a newscast is one of the, the things that they put out all the time. 40 seconds? Yeah. Clip. It, it's here. It's Then it's to this anchor. It's this camera side. It's just little blurbs and gone. People remember that. So, Just something to keep in mind. Uh, next is cameras. What kind of cameras are you going to use? There's yeah. a ton of them on the market. Now you can go and, you know, we're not going to tell you that you should go buy a $2,500 camera and it's cheap because I don't believe that. Uh, this is the camera that we use to shoot restaurant food fast. One of them. Uh, one of them. We, we use a total of two cameras. Well, three cameras. No, two. We, well, we, we had three. We've we cut, cut it down to two. <laughs> and these are really nice because they have the SD card in them. Yes. What model camera is that? This is a Panasonic SDR S7. But it's, it's a really nice, really reasonable. This was like $170. And we, like I said, and we shoot, uh, we shot all of Restaurant Food Fast with this camera and Jeff's other camera, which he didn't burn. This goes back to planning again. How are you going to present this information? If you go and you want to put a huge amount of production cost into your show and you're going to shoot with a red <laughs> at, at HD, what pipeline are you going to put that to? I mean, that's going to be a huge Don't care, I'm shooting up the red. <laughs> you're going to send it up to, you know, Blip or any of these, these people. They're going to take it, smash it. They're going to make it fun. Most places that you, if you're going to broadcast, shotgun broadcast, um, which means you send it to one place and they in turn send it out to everybody else, a lot of these places will take your high-end video crushing the flash. So it, it's something you want to think about before you start going into, well, I want a really nice camera. Great camera, but once you crush it, you're going to get the same quality you're, you're as you would with, with, with that. So yeah, actually, you'll still end up with a better quality. But what kind of quality you can get out of that? It's standard def. It's, I mean, it's not high def, but if you watch it on uh, through Blip, because Blip's the one who hosts us. Uh, but uh, it's it would be the same. It's it, kind of like YouTube at, uh, at high end. Okay. You can definitely see it, it's a better quality than just a you know. The other thing to keep in mind, and we we're waffling about particularly with cameras, is the better image you have to start with, the better it looks like when it's crushed. Exactly. So that's why we went from. Okay. Um, Sorry, this may not, you might hit on this later on, but uh, does that have an audio intake? Do you find that good this quality one, audio is more important than the quality <laughs> of the video? You're right. <laughs> this camera does not. Jeffrey's camera does have an audio output that, that input, we can, input. input that we can use. Um, that's next so, on our list. Yeah, that's next on our list. <laughs> because once again, we started and we were going with cheap. You know, we, we had this passion that we wanted to, to do these shows. But at the same time, we didn't have a lot of money, you know, so it wasn't like we had the opportunity to go out and buy a $2,500 camera. I had a DV camera, and that's what we're talking about here, which is a regular DV tape that you pop in. And mini DVs, this little... The mini DV cameras. And I had one that I bought for my family. And so we'll start using that. Well, I ended up burning that camera out between taking shots, rewinding it, putting it into the computer to, you know, put on the camera burn. So I bought this, which has the SD card in it, pop the SD card out, throw it in a reader, and dump it that quick. Because anybody who's done any kind of capturing knows when you're getting it from an SD camera, you're watching it twice. It only captures as fast as, as you did it. So when we were doing 45 minutes to an hour shows before editing, I had to watch it 45 minutes to an hour. Three cameras. Three cameras. So I had to do it three times. So the other thing is just hobbies too. How many, I mean, everybody has a hobby and you have a wish list. And this is our hobby. So as we're doing this, we're like, well, this is really nice, but I'd like that. 
That's why so, I got ooh, that. Okay. Then he goes and gets that. Well, that's really good. We should get two of those. <laughs> so now, okay, well, you'll go and get that one. Oh, well, that's real nice. Now we need this. So, so when you're picking your camera, figure out what you're going to do, whether you need a regular mini DV or the uh, SD card. <coughs> like I said, the SD cards are really nice. Yeah, high def versus standard def. This is what we were saying before. You could you could do it on high def, you know, with a red camera that does super 1080p quality, and you're going to push it to a web service that's going to smash it into flash, and you're really not going to see that kind of quality because the pipes aren't there. Right. It's the difference between user produced. Exactly. If you're going to make something on a DVD that you're going to hand out, by all means, get the, the best camera you can. For doing stuff on the web. I really want to suggest a monster camera because nobody's going to see the right. quality that you just paid all that money. Unless you're funded, have your own servers, and can put that kind of bandwidth up, you're not going to be able to pipe out that huge amount of uh, video. Do, do your hosts have a expected format? Do, and I use Blip, and every pretty much any, anything that I've loaded to Blip has worked, and I do a lot of stuff in QuickTime. I put up WMVs. Um, I haven't had it bark on, on a format yet. But it, I mean, do they have on their on their their page yeah. that says their, we prefer? And, and they, they don't want you to put, by six forty. Yeah, and they don't want you to put up like a gig. So yeah. I think that a gig is a minimum file. It's the maximum file size on Blend. The other thing is keep yeah. in mind YouTube. Good. How often do you spray on the line? I mean, sometimes let's say you should on the HD camera, and maybe you want to use it for different purposes. They want to use HD, 1080, 1080p. How often you strip on the, you know, on the real time? And how often you take this footage, <coughs> take the final cut, and use whatever codec, H264, mm -hmm. sorry, and some, and in flavor, and you cut to two, any segments, let's say, two or three, five minutes. How often do you strip on the line, and how often do you re-edit stuff? We edit everything uh -huh. on, on our on our shows. Um, we have talked about doing some streaming, and I'm going to talk about that during the rest of the presentation. But we we don't do any streaming currently. Um, not that we don't want to. We just got to figure out the format. We're still up in the air with that. Um, we definitely want to do it. We would love to have user interaction and have like a call-in show. Uh, that's one of the things that we're looking at. Um, Again, it's time constraints. It goes back to planning. Um, there are three of us that deal with the show every week. So saying every day, I mean, I've got teenagers in high school. He's got kids. He's the only one who's single, so him time doesn't matter. But for <laughs> us, it's like, okay, to set a block of time every day or every week, however long your show is going to be, uh, Walt Rubino was talking about that. He does, uh, I don't know if he's here this year. Well, last year. Supposed to be. Yeah, um, I think I he does an online stream <coughs> music school. He's really, really good. Teaches you how to play music. It's every single, I think it's every day he does it at yeah. 7 o'clock. Um, that's how he makes his living. So it's easy for him because he knows this is how I make my money. It's 7 o'clock every day. I'm on for an hour. This is the segment I'm in the head. For us, it's a little different. So when you go to streaming, you really got to plan a little deeper because you have to set up how they're going to get to you. They're going to have phone lines to get to you. You're going to run this off my house phone. Am I going to be pulling in calls from Australia? Um, you know, what? how many people do I have to have available to be in one room? Because different programs have different strengths. So you may say, okay, I want to use this program, but it only allows 25 people in a room. Now what happens if you blow up? When you start, if you're doing a little family show or, or something, you know, my family's dispersed throughout the world. I won't be able to talk to them every day or such time. That's fine. But if you start putting out an informative cast that everybody wants to see, now you guys start thinking about bandwidth. How many people can I put in a room? How are they going to get to me? What's going to be the cost? So, streaming is a whole different set of regulations and, and things, processes you have to think about when you're when you're doing your planning. Uh, for you go to the FireWire one, uh, back with the uh, HD and the standard def. There are sites out there right now that proclaim to have high definition. You know, if you go to like YouTube, or whatever they have, like your HD service. That's really not HD. It's just higher quality. Because even on those, they they say the maximum that they'll handle, I think, is like a 720p. 
So anything you shoot in 1080 or higher or above, you know, isn't going to help you a lot. So 720 should be fine. So if you put that out, you're still going to have better quality. And also dealing with the camera, something that wasn't mentioned. That's a great camera for so, what we're using so it for. So you shoot for a 720 for a big stuff. Right? Pretty much. Um, the thing is, I, the camera right now we're having, I'm shooting it, we're, uh, we're using it at a 1080i. Um, what are you shooting is the other thing for when you're choosing your camera. We have a stationary sitting there. Okay, lock camera, taking the two guys talking. Don't need a high-end camera for that. We have fixed lighting, full control over stuff like that. If you're going to be doing something, a uh, sports show, and you're following somebody along to do something like that, you can have highlights and shadows. You're going to want something with a little bit better camera, better crystal in it, so it'll be able to pick up the lights and the darks a lot better. Do you want to go into that? Are you guys interested in the, the cameras? What I was just going to kind that? of end it off there. and Yeah. I just was curious if you're going to, maybe you already did, but if you're going to talk about lighting. Lighting's coming up. Coming up. Coming up. All right, the firmware versus USB is the camera itself, how the camera outputs. Now, if you're using a, a camera like this that has the SD card and you pull the SD card out and plug it in, you get the, the file onto your computer. If you're going to have to, with a DV camera, and you're going to have to import it, you want to look as to whether or not it has a firewire versus USB connection. The USB connection, i found, I've never had luck with them because it's like it doesn't transfer the data fast enough and it drops frames. So if you're going to use it, a DV camera, see if, you, if it's possible to get a firewire, if the camera has a firewire output. So it just makes it a lot easier getting it into your uh, editing program, whatever it would be, because the, for whatever reason, the USB is just not there. And if you don't want, you don't know how mad you get when you just shoot an hour's worth of material and then realize that you've dropped frames every 20 seconds or you've lost your time code and now you can't sync up anything out of it. Yeah. You have to do it all over again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, another reason to go with DSC. Go with it, start going with digital if you can. It makes life a lot easier. Don't forget your white balance. If you have a camera that is, that, okay, so. Uh, you might get to this. Um, when you're pulling off the SD, what format is it in? Because I always have trouble pulling the Final Cut Pro if I'm not pulling directly from a document. You are right. There is an application out there called Visual Hub. Download Visual Hub. You can't get it anymore. You can find, you can find it off Torrent of sites. Yeah. From, get, what I, from what I've heard. Get Visual Hub, and there is a, a a, a checkbox in Visual Hub that will convert for Final Cut. Is there a secondary to Visual Hub? Uh, I, I don't know. I've, I've been using Visual Hub forever. Well, the thing is, some um, if you use like iMovie, things like that, some of those will be able to take that movie format, you'll be able to put it in there, then you'll be able to throw it out as a quick time or yeah. something else, and, and then record it in. So you're gonna, you, no matter what, you're always going to have another step to go into. Unless you choose your camera appropriately. There are a few cameras out there that work straight out, boom, with Final Cut. Right. Um, the one I have does, but some of the other stuff we do doesn't, so he still has to go through, you know, yeah, that's his fun part. Choice. What What is your program? You edit, and what does it want? You know, what is the format that it wants to edit? In? Yeah, because most of the cameras out there are, have their own proprietary codec. That they're you know file type that it is. Even Especially Sony's. <laughs> Sony's. Sony's tend to have their own language. They have their own reality. Yeah. But they're good cameras. Uh, yeah. So the last thing is, don't forget the white balance. If you have a, a camera that's like this, this is an automatic camera. I don't even have to play with the white balance on it. But if you get a higher end camera that gives you the opportunity to white balance, please do. Uh, it, it makes your video look so much better. It, I mean, just something as simple as getting the white balance correct. Yeah, not necessarily better, just consistent across the board. Especially yeah. if you're going to be using multiple cameras, you're going to want to white balance every single camera because that way it'll make your post Cut shots a lot look. easier. Uh -oh. Yeah, you'll have cameras that pick up blues higher, reds higher, yellows. And if you don't balance them before you start, when you start doing cuts, if you're using multiple cameras, you're going to have one shot where his shirt looks kind of yellow, the next shot where his shirt looks kind of blue. And it's like when you start, you'll notice it, and just like that, as soon as you start looking at your editing cuts. All right. Now we're moving on to lighting, the fun stuff. How do you plan to light your subject? With lights. 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> what lights? What kind of lights? Yeah. What color lights? How many? Back, front, top, four, twelve? Light natural? Would kill a show. That, is, that, that should have bullet points and lightning bolts and everything all around it. We know from experience. Exactly. Uh, it, how many have seen a video on YouTube where it was just so dark that it was disgusting? You, you could just barely see the face. Or they, they overexposed it and it was just so bright that it was painful to watch. Wash out. Or they turn and all of a sudden it's a half a face. <laughs> what do you like? Uh, you always want to make sure your lighting is perfect. We would take 10, 15, 20 minutes sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, for yeah. the cooking show in particular. Yeah. Because it was a multi camera shot. And so we would have to sit. Parts of the room and is that and, too and, hot? Is that blown out? Yeah. Do we have to turn this on, turn that on, turn it off? The other thing is they can be hugely expensive. Yeah. So what do you use? Natural light. Natural light is preferred. If you're going to shoot something outside, it, it's really, really great. And I think that's one of the reasons Command M uses it. Because it's it's free. That's basically what you're trying to do in, on a set. You're trying to replicate replicate Natural full light. ambient light. Because all the things that you don't think about when you're looking at something. I'm the least artsy I mean, of the group when it comes to that. He knows about it because editing, and that's his job. I'm like, what are you talking about? Just turn the lights on. You can see. Yeah. yeah. When you're out in a room or a well-lit area, the light's coming from everywhere, and you don't realize it. Backlighting. Backlighting is huge. Especially on you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't realize it, but when I'm standing here, there's light coming off the whiteboard, off the walls, and it lights the back of your face or the back of your product. So you don't get these heavy, dark shadows involved. Yeah, and especially with a camera, since a camera can't pick up what the human eye can, you can easily differentiate the background from him. But when you put a backlight in, the camera can see it like that. And that's what makes a huge difference in any standard lighting. If you just throw in a backlight, fill lights, really handy. But a backlight is probably even more important at times to make the character stand out from the background. And that's what Jeff's talking about, three-point lights. You would have a, a main light that would be on the subject, that would be in Chuck's face. You'd have a backlight back here, and then you would have a fill light, like on the side. Which is going to fit on the shadowed side. Yeah, on the shadowed side. No, that clears on the shadow. Your fill light would be... Uh, lower, lower intensity. Yes. Because you don't want to get rid of the shadows. You just want to dull them a bit. So that way, you know, unless you're going for a film noir, where you want to have, see half the guy's face and the other side's, you know, blacked out. But if you just want to have, a, you know, gentle light coming up from there, so you would use like, you know, like 25 watt bulb, or preferably if you have diffusing filters to put over top of your light. And here's that how expensive the these things are. Oh, yeah. If you go that kills our budget. Set, if you go buy a light set, if they're thousand, they're, they're expensive. You know, you can buy a full rack light set. Yeah, tungsten um, right. tempered. They can be hugely expensive. Or you can go the route. You know, we did. We went out to a hardware store and bought we? a little clip-on lights, right, with the big aluminum shell. Yeah, they really was. Three right, dollars. stuff from tinfoil. Yeah. Yeah, 100 watt light bulbs, throw those in there. And for the diffuser, we used a sheet of paper. Take white paper. Instead of buying a gel pack, you can just get you know, different fills. You can go to any of them. Yes. Somebody this morning, I think you were in the class, mm -hmm. said that they use um, oven parchment. Yes. Yeah. If, if you use lower wattage, yeah, if you yeah. use your paper works fine. The, you know, we're using 100 watt bulbs. We have high intensity lighters. Yeah, we're using bright bulbs so we can put a full sheet of paper over there and not really lose a whole lot. But if you're using a lower lot, lot bulb, because some of the, you have to, you know, whatever light you get, read what its maximum is. Because the ones I have, I think, can handle 150 watt bulbs. I, I want to make sure we can blow up whatever we wanted to. And then you can put your light on there because you can use any pretty much anything you can throw over top of the gauze. Gauze will actually add a really cool effect um, for your scene. But just you know, standard parchment paper or make sure it's not touching the gels will be expensive. Sharp. That's where that's what those filters are called, is gels. And you can go buy packs of them and they can be relatively expensive. Yeah, but unless you're getting but the main reason you're gonna use gels is for color correction. Yes. Off of your light. Because the lights you're gonna get aren't color corrected. But if you pretty much all set up all your lighting and then do your white balance, for the stuff you're going to be doing here, it should be fine for a podcast. No one's going to say, but it's not blue enough. I, we haven't had that in a single comment on any of our shows, I don't think. So, yes. so we don't need a full spectrum light bulb? Um, if you can get one, great, but don't go out of your way for it. Oh, expensive. 
Um, they can be because you're going to be getting a color calibrated um, set, and for those, depending, they can get up there because you get a cut tungsten. If you go to, to any of the Home Depot lows, things like that. Yeah, I get the reveal lights because they have a pretty they have a good spectrum on. You don't want to go with anything fluorescent. You want to go with all condescent, incandescent light bulbs. But you go if you go and look, they have a um, a section that's used for I don't know why they have them for aquariums, they have them for growing plants, all this stuff. Yeah. And you, I did see full spectrum bulbs there. Um, mm -hmm. They're a little bit more, but when you're talking about that application, they're actually a ton cheaper than if you try to buy it from uh, a lighting or a camera. Yeah, a movie company. Because so when you, you, you can those. get them, you can get them a ton cheaper than you will for the application. Just that's, a, that's a lot of information on a technical topic I don't know anything about. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, for stuff like that, if you're really curious, go do any search on the web for um, independent filmmaking. They have how to do anything that a production house does cheap. Anything from making dollies to you know steady cams to what kind of lighting you know barn doors stuff they'll they'll have instructions and stuff on how to do that. Do you have a site you recommend? Um, honest, no, I don't. I just do a search, find out the information I have, and I'll have five different sites open and compare them. And uh, if they have the same information, I know it's probably good. You go to Izzy Video and iTunes. Yes, Izzy Video is ex excellent for. I've heard of that one. Yeah. Video is I Z Z Y and I Z Z Y. Yeah. Uh, and the, other, the last thing is screencasts. Uh, because we do a, a show about Macintosh, it's, it's good for us to be able to show what we're doing instead of putting a camera on the, on the computer itself. Uh, for Windows, you can use Camtasia. There, there's a ton of those. Uh, Snagit makes something. Um, for the Macs, we use Screenium. And it's built into QuickTime 10. QuickTime 10. And QuickTime 10 you can do it with if you have the new Snow Leopard. When you look at your screen captures, basically what functions do you have to have? You know what all, everybody knows what a screen capture is? Yes, no? Yes. No? Yes. Yes. no? Okay, for those of you who don't, screen captures, when if you watch a podcast about computers, they'll go from the talent and then you'll see the screen. And that's all you see is it's a picture of what they're doing online. So kind of instead of taking a still, it's actually video of what's going on on the screen. In, in fact, we'll screen and we'll export once you're done, and we'll export as a, a movie file, dot a movie file, so you can pull it in and then click that. And it's what, what functions do you have to have when you're looking at your screen capture software? What do I need? You know, do I need to be able to zoom? Do I not have to zoom? Does it have to export this or that? Just take a look through all of them. And Cursor following. All right, editing software. For the Macintosh, you have iMovie that comes with it that you can use. It, it's not as good as the older version. The newer version is a little more complex, but it's still free. Final Cut Express is about $200. Uh, it's excellent, uh, excellent software. The other is Final Cut Pro, which the whole Final Cut Pro suite is about $1,200. And that is state of the art. That and that is, yeah. That's it. I mean, they. Yeah. On, on Windows, you have Movie Maker, which is built into the OS. You have Adobe Premiere, which is probably one of the top end Windows applications for making movies. It's also and, on the and, Macintosh. And, yeah, it's also on the Macintosh. And you can go on and on. Pinnacle, et cetera. I mean, there's a ton of editing software out there. Like your screen capture stuff, your editing software is what do I have to have? What does it have to be able to do? Um, if you've worked with any differences in Pro versus Expert in anything, GarageBand to Logic Pro, um, yeah. iMovie to, it's just how deep you can edit. How far down do I have to drill? Whereas iMovie, you can edit one track at a time. And, uh, Don't you have multi-track on the uh, new iMovie? No. They have multi-track on uh, Final Cut Express, and you can do up to two tracks. And if you go to Final Cut Pro, you can do as many tracks as you can. This is all back to planning. What are you going to do? How many camera shots are you going to have? So is that two tracks audio and two tracks video, or two tracks? No, no, it's two, tra two tracks audio two tracks video. That's what actually, do four, exactly. four tracks. Four tracks audio because it's stereo. Uh, host okay. So you should have this camera. Do you the interlace or you the frame mount or you just let it go with the software? I pretty much like go with the software. Or you should like in your frame, right? And then cut it to the size and the final cut, right? Uh, 
Yeah, well, I use, after I edit it in Final Cut, I run it through a compressor and it's 640 by 4. Use a compressor, right? Yes. Uh, the hosting. Streaming, you can use Ustream TV, stickum.com, BitGravity. These are if you plan on just doing stream. You know, you can set up your, your web. You know the difference, right? We were talking about that earlier. Yeah. So you can set up your webcam if you want to just live cast. This is basically what you can look at. Uh, post video, Blip TV. We have, I highly recommend Blip TV. They cross post for you. They, is it the pro account or the regular account? That's a regular account. That's, okay. that's the free account. Okay. It'll let you it'll let you cross post to if you have a, a website on a blogger, you put the account information in, check a box when you upload it, it'll post it right there. Uh, in fact, ours it posts it to the site, it sends out a Twitter that says that it's done, and it posts a thing on my Facebook that says it's done. That's Lipty. Yes, Lipty. <laughs> Do you guys use TubeMobile or anything like that to? to we we did use TubeMobile on uh, on Restaurant Food Fast. Um, in fact, they have a really cool plugin. If you go to Wizard TV, another freebie thing. At Wizard TV, they have a deal with Mo uh, with uh, Tube Mobile that they'll put it in and they'll shop it to every place. You just go in and sign up for all the accounts, and that takes care of it. So we did that with Restaurant Food Fast. We haven't done it with this this one now. So you put it on YouTube? Then? No, I don't post to YouTube. And, well, YouTube's one of our. Our, you know, you can't post food. We can't because you only get 10 minute limit. Mm -hmm. Another thing you want to think about. Yeah, that, that goes in your plan because YouTube will let you upload a 100 minute video as long as it's not 10 minutes. You know, got to be under. So it's something you want to think about if you're going to do it. Um, if it's a longer show, you want to break your editing down into 9 minute, 58 second segments um, and then put them up multiples for YouTube. Uh, where, where your highest volume, you know, where are you going to go? What do you, what's your objective when you, when you're doing this? Biddler is another, uh, they were sponsored here last year. Biddler is very cool. Uh, they're along the lines of blip kind of, they won't redistribute, but you have a site that you can put them on and you can put in more than 10 minutes. So it's kind of like YouTube, except it's a little better because you can put in longer length videos. But it's not going to be distributed like Blip does. Vimeo, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but that'll do pretty much the same thing. These are, they, they, what's, they are. These are just suggested. There are other sites, of course. Uh, the only ones that are listed here are the ones that I've used. I don't, because I can talk to how well they work or don't work. Um, but if you have something, you know, you can probably find other video sites out there. I don't want you to think this is all there is. Oh, okay, no, please. This isn't even close. When you start trying to market your podcast, then you'll see just how many places. Oh, yeah. It gets, gets crazy. Okay. My question is, so how do you get from the editing? Okay, I've worked in Final Cut. I finished my movie. Okay. I just take it over to Bash TV? Do I have to do something with it? Do um, I have to compress it? Do I have to... You, you sign up for a account on Blip TV okay. if you're going to use Blip. And then there's, you can down, there's an application you can download that will upload it for you before you can just go through the web. Basically, you point it where it is. So in other words, I export my movie. I make a quick time movie out of my movie. Sure. And, I, and just and pump then, it up. When you say pump it up, that's your question. Yeah, well, you can log, you log into, uh, if you do it through the web, just log in with your Blip TV account. There's an upload button. No, ask button. me which. Yeah, area. browse no, to ask, which no, movie. Ask me which browse. Yeah. Okay, that was, yeah. that was the question. Exactly. I thought maybe I had to compress it myself. No, well, you can if you want. I do. I compress mine myself. And but, you have a program I right? Yeah, compressor. Yeah, compressor. I, I compressor. use compressor for that. But 60, 640 by 40. That's what I. That's a personal preference. There's nothing that's you know, carved in stone that says you have to do it. Why do you use that? To that's do it? A <coughs> the best quality I video. I like to export some of the size because if they're going to smash it, it's better for them to smash something big than to try and stretch something in the All right, And that's a common graphic thing. If you have, if you want to make a, a graphic that's this big, draw it this big and smash it down, it will look a lot better than if you make it this big and stretch it. Yeah. 
So how big is your blip KV file? Is it under a half like? Um, we would average right around 200, right around 200, 200 meg per show. But then, like I said, it's converted to flash. 30 minutes? Yeah. Sometimes. So we, we, we try not to go over 30 minutes, but sometimes I can't shut it off. When you guys, after you, you produce a show and you go to distribute it, uh, and then you guys have these, the ones that you prefer, do you find that you get more viewers from one side versus another versus... iTunes. To be honest with you, iTunes. ITunes, gets the iTunes by far gives us the most things. And the other cool thing about Blip is when you get into Blip and you start producing your show, Blip will create a wrapper for you for iTunes. And then you just go into iTunes, sign up, say, I want to upload a podcast. And you copy that link in. You need a logo for them. And yeah, you do need a logo. You can't, you can't, you can't upload it to the yeah. to uh, iTunes, iTunes specifically. Stuff. You need to have a logo that's the 300 by 300. Yeah. And if you have one of those, it'll just yeah, you're good to go. Auto do it. That's where we get 60 percent last time I looked. Yeah. Sixty percent of, of our guys. If you're going to have a a, pod, uh, a video podcast that you want people to see, get it in iTunes. Again, you have to plan where you're going to push it out. What do you expect people to view it on? If you expect them to view it on uh, iPhone, you may have to think about how you you're going to, to distribute it, or you may have to uh, compress it twice. You may have to compress it once for regular viewing and once for the iPhone. Because the iPhone's a different resolution. You compress it once for iTunes or twice for iTunes? Depending upon whether or not you're going to have an iPhone version. Okay. Because iPhone is a iTunes will take care of that. You can convert it to I, uh, for iPhone. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, um, we just came across that with a video that we're hosting on our, on our actual website. Which I, and I hadn't even thought about it using QuickTab because of how many iPhone, that's the only way iPhone users can see yes. videos from their phone is if it's equipped, uploaded with the time. Yeah, yep. Again, it's, it's all back to the original planning part. Or, or M4V2. It'll also do M4V2. How much time do you guys spend a week, all told, for you to put the show together? Well, we're actually just talking about that, yeah, including looping around, or <laughs> actual work time. I guess. Actual work time. Uh, the shooting of it takes us about uh, three hours for a half hour. Show. For a half hour show. One hour of those is a political rant that has nothing to do with their show. So. The other one's telling him to get his pants on finally. Then we have to do our lighting setup and camera setup, and then a quick run through, and then the more effort you put into your show, the better product you're going to have. It's plain and simple. When we start shows, we, we kind of do this backwards to the way we teach it because we like the podcasting part of it. So now we try to figure out what we're going to podcast. So when we took a break from the restaurant food, <coughs> we had gotten the production down to what we, we knew worked. Now we've got another one, and now we're fine-tuning our production because I, I don't spend nearly enough time doing the prep work that I should do. Um, the more time and effort you put into it, the better it comes out. Yeah. Are you guys making any money off of this? No. Well, oh, come on. Uh, no, no, don't say that. Aren't we up to like a dollar seven total? A dollar seven total, yeah. After 71 <laughs> shows and then another 15 shows, I think that uh, on Blip, uh, they owe me 57 cents. And on, uh, on uh, well, Google now, Ads. So you guys are retiring this year. Yes. Yeah. Now go back. Well, how many how many total downloads have we had? Total downloads oh. for restaurant food fast. Holy crap! Yeah, there's quite a few. We we we've, we've had eighty. Yeah, like eighty thousand. Eighty thousand? Oh, I thought eighty total. I was thinking, damn. Um, <laughs> you, you, that's another thing towards planning. What's your end? What what is you? What are you doing this for? If you're looking to monetize, mm -hmm. tough. Mm -hmm. Tough. <laughs> Technical question: um, When you're compressing, mm -hmm. what output do you use typically? To MOV. MOV. Yes. I have. I know there's a lot of streaming. You know, when you go on a compressor, you have like 50 different. Yeah, options. usually I'll yeah. I'll use the 800 kb streamer, and I and I uh, went through and I reconfigured it just to do it by 640 by 480, so I'd have that resolution. Um, how? How people can see a show? Is there a quick time or a media player or a starting song? Are you 
thinking about the class, a lot of things going on with the class, you know, the whisper thing, and a lot of people want to see the health value of my against the footage, you know? Yeah. Um, well, with, with using blip, blip converts it to flash as part of its thing, so when it redistributes it, it redistributes it as flash. And I'm really not scared of people stealing it. I, I allow it to be downloaded through uh, iTunes, so if anybody wants to show it, uh, Max and Life, you can look it up on, the on uh, iTunes. Or feel Restaurant Food Fast. I'm still waiting to yeah. see a parody. Yeah, yeah. Feel, free to, feel free to download it. <laughs> yeah. There's Drunk Fat Guy cooking again. <laughs> Maybe we'll get two bucks. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Then, then we can go get a beer. And Are that's the about, difference. Like product placement or something like that? Like, uh, we, we've done AdSense. Set up anything versus yeah, we put AdSense on uh, Restaurant Food Fast. Which, I don't ever make any money for that. Yeah, and uh, to be honest with you, they only send you a check if you make over 100 bucks. 100 dollars, yeah. And we're, we made two I mean, we've gone through all the different ones. You'll see online, they'll tell you, you know, a billion people will say you need to use this, you need to use that, you need to use the other. All kind of You're talking about a massive, a massive amount of people watching your show to get money out of this. Um, yeah, Lou Port, uh, Kelly Lewis, those people are making good money. That's their living. But they're talking about a huge view. Yeah, two and a half million views. Yeah, you're talking about. huge. If you get, you know, what well, doesn't six thousand people a day looking at your show, then you should have a sponsor. Perhaps it, it, again, it depends on your show. It depends on what you're doing it on. You but know what I mean? There are things that go viral. For example, if you look on YouTube, that uh, Fred. Anybody? No, know don't anybody? even go. Anybody? Shut up. Fred? No, seriously. I am curious. Have you seen Fred? Uh -huh. No. Okay, go to youtube.com slash Fred. It's this little, this young kid, he's probably 14 years old, he gets 3 million views a week. My kid showed me this and it, it's, three years ago. Oh, it's he, quite irritating. He's just doing it for fun. Mm -hmm. He affects his voice, he acts like a little kid. He's actually terribly funny back when he was just doing it for fun. He got picked up by who? Sprint? I, I, I know, I knew. Was, was it a Sprint or one of those Sprint, somebody, phone companies? One of the big phone companies. Because, just yeah, so because he gave him a bucket load of money. Yeah, just because he was And it's all product just he's getting he's hits. Yeah, he's getting three million hits. So make sure that there's a Mountain Dew on the table. Make sure that you're using the Sprint phone. There's always a Mountain Dew on the table. This. But wow. I mean, and that kid's making a fortune. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. And it's really yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. I mean, me personally, I couldn't watch it. Once, much less three million. Kind of, you're probably not his target market. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, his target market's young kids. It's 13, 14 year olds that will sit and watch it four and five times. <laughs> exactly. Back to planning. Why are you doing it? What is the reason you're putting it started doing it just because it was fun for him. Yeah. That's, I mean, we started doing voice podcasts way back when just because he wanted to. Just I thought it would be fun. Yeah. Do you do much linking to others' uh, podcasts? We we don't have a problem with it. If we some, don't currently. We don't yeah, currently. But host, I mean, so. I don't have a problem mentioning somebody's podcast and our doing our podcast. Uh, there's the average Joe show that I do with a, a guy from uh, New Jersey, and I'll mention him in our podcast. But it's not like a a, a trade off thing where he's going to mention me and I'm going to mention him. Yeah, again, it depends on your cast. It's yeah. very much. It's it's a lot easier for us to do that with the Max and Life, just because of the community. Um, because when I get information from people and people email me, um, it, it's really easy at that point to go, oh, yeah, I got this off of this guy's site. Here's a link to his site. He's got a lot of good information. When we're doing the cooking show, it's a little different. You know what I mean? Because, and that goes back to your planning because with the cooking show, everybody eats. Right. So you're figuring, I'm going to get a broader audience with a cooking show because more people are going to go, I eat. Yeah. So when, when we went to the Mac show, we're zooming in on a more of a target audience. 12% of the households. Yeah, 12% of the households have a Mac. So that's what we decided to go for. And it, that goes along with titling also. Absolutely. Titling, it, searching a web. With a, with a cooking show, they're not searching your web name. They're searching what you're doing. So we had an issue when we first started because we were putting down episode one. When did you last cook episode one? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Last week. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what we started doing was putting in the name of what you're doing in that show. So if you're going to do a review show on movies, 
put in that title when you pump that show up, put review of Wolverine. There you go. When someone searches, bless you. When someone searches, that will come up. That all comes under SEO, search engine optimization. Yes. Which is planning and marketing. And that would be a whole other long class. Yeah. When, when you guys um, shoot the video, you started in, in voice. Um, do you run your, your voice recorder at the same time? Um, to be honest with you, no, we use or two. you just use the in camera. We use the yeah, we use the camera. You're talking about vi voice being important. Yes, it is. It, it is very important. We just haven't gotten there yet. We we want it, it, It's one of the things where you don't really want to skimp on the mics, and we just don't have the money to get the mics, to get the mics we want. So currently, we're using the built-in mics. We are planning on going to you know like a lot of later mics. Because mics are funny. But, but are you, what I'm saying is, is are you, you're just, right now, you're just using the in-camera the in uh, yes. audio track. Yes. And once again, it, it's because of the way the show is. It's just two guys sitting there talking. We're not looking for depth of field. We're not going to be looking for, he's talking on this side, so I'm, I'm going to split the stereo channel and all that other fun stuff. It's it's basically, you know, the two of us sitting at a table with a, with a camera and a mic in front of us. Was that even close to what you were looking at? Yeah, yeah, I, I've got some, some things coming down the pike that I'm going to have to... The one thing, you can skimp on lights, you can set up, you can be creative with lights. You can go, there's a huge range of difference between camera cost. When you start talking about, okay, I'm going to get the best chip set I can get, but it's not going to have these features because I don't need them. Mics, completely different type. You will know the difference in your mics. Because we bought some cheap uh, lavalier, lavalier uh, knockoffs. I've been in bands my whole life. You will know. You yeah, will know the difference. The cheap lavalier knockoffs were very good. Yes. Are you able to um, adjust the sound in the editing process? Yes, you can. To, to an extent. You can, yeah. you, you can play with the game and whatnot and make it sound a little. You can clean it up. And yeah. When well, you're talking about you editing, our, show, our shows, the, the audio one is not bad for you know a web show. If you were going to go and watch this on the network, you'd go, hello. <laughs> yeah, well, when you're talking about editing, video or audio, you can get as in depth as you want. I mean, you can take your audio track and edit it like you were producing an album. Um, to where you go in and go, okay, here's a sample of my ambient noise, take it all out. And then just chop it down, it'll be perfect. How much time do you have? You know, it's all up to you. End product. Right. Any other questions? We have the website, Lip TV now. What's your, the name of your show? Max and... No, in fact, it's Mac and Light. M-A-C-I-N-I-F-E. And that's a very good example of a poorly produced job. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Uh, it, it's, it is funny because we just don't, we do it as we go. We go, I don't like this, change this, do that work. And if you want to see something funny, go to Restaurant Food Fast. It's restaurantfoodfast.com. Go to episode one. Start at episode one and go through and you can actually watch the show mature. <laughs> You can see the difference in production. Episode the difference one, we in didn't cameras. care about lights. We just had a camera and him. Yeah. And you can see what you don't, don't want to do. Exactly. And episode two, and he said, hey, you know what? It might be a good idea to put some lights on. <laughs> yeah, get the dog out of the set. You need to uh, turn your phone off. That was that took three weeks. I'm trying to win that one. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, have one. <laughs>